Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how to kick open a door. So in this we're going to have an animation for kicking that will then make the door open and we can either have it so then the door is just staying open or you can then open and close it normally afterwards as well. But essentially we're going to kick it down to basically unlock it. So if I hit play I can show you what this is going to look like. So we can go over to the door, if I press E to open it it's going to snap it in place, play a kicking animation and the door will close and you can see it kind of came back a bit as well as we had that much force it kind of went open and came back a bit. Now I say because we had that much force that's just me saying why I did that because that is an animation which I've made that isn't actually the physics doing it it's just what we're going to create today. So again we have the kicking animation and it will open perfectly like so we can walk through like this. And again we can open it and close it afterwards normally like so. So this is what we're making today so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is import our kicking animation. Now for this I've just got an animation off of Mixmo and retitled it to the UE4 mannequin. If you search for kicking on Mixmo it should be the first one which comes up. Obviously you can use whichever ones you like. So this is what I'm going to be using and again I've just retargeted it to the UE4 mannequin and I have a video on animation retargeting if you'd like to see that as well. So once you've done that what we can do is we can right click on that animation, we can create and create an anim montage. And using an animation montage is just going to make it easier to just play this animation instead of having to merge it into our animation blueprint and state machine we can just do this instead and because we've done that we also want to allow our animation blueprint to use montages so to do that i'm going to open up my animation blueprint which for me is content mannequin animations third person animation pp and in the anim graph here so you may be in the state machine so just click anim graph i'm going to come out of the state machine and get a slot default slot which again just allows the use of animation montages. This will be full body montages, which it will be by default, so we can just close that. Next, we want to actually create our door. So what we're gonna do for this is right click, create a blueprint class, and create an actor. And I'm gonna name this one kick down door BP, but you can just name this door BP or anything along those lines. And in here, we want to add a component, and we want to add a static mesh. I'm gonna name this one door. As it sounds, this is gonna be our door. So for me, I'm going to be using the start content SM door, which we have by default, like so. And add that in like that. Then I'm also going to add in a box collision. So I'm going to add component and add a box collision, like so. And I'm going to scale this up to be how big I want. And essentially, if the player is inside this box collision, then they can open and close the door. They can interact with it. They can kick it down, stuff like that. So essentially, the player has to be inside this box collision to interact with the door. So make that however big you want. But I think for me, that's going to be good. Then the final thing we want to do is deselect that, add a component, and we want to add a skeletal mesh. And now the reason we're doing this is just to use it as a reference. So I'm going to select the skeletal mesh to be my mannequin. However, this can be whichever mesh you are using for your character. And then what I'm going to do is just rotate it so it's facing the door. Move that there, like so. And then on the animation, I'm going to make it use an animation asset and have it using the kicking animation which we have here. And so now we can see how far away it needs to be from the door for it to look good. So I'm going to move it a little bit closer so that when we are kicking it looks like we're actually going to hit the door. So I think that looks good. It looks like the foot is hitting the door for it to open once we kick it. So I think that's going to be good. I'm going to make it stop using the animation montage. And I'm going to rotate it that way like so. So it's going to be going to be facing forwards. It may need to be the other way but we can mess about with that later on when we get into the fine details of it. However again we're just using this as a reference so we can move the player into the correct location and rotation and distance from the door and stuff like that so it looks as good as it can be. And then what we also want to do is just tick hidden in game so we scroll down you find hidden in game and tick that and that just means we won't see this in the game so this is purely just a reference for us to use to get its location so we know how far away from the door the player needs to be. And it should have no collision by default but just make sure it does have that. And you can compile and save that and that's done in the viewport so now we can go to the event graph and start setting up the code. So let's delete these three nodes here and what I'm going to do is right click the box collision, and add event, add on component begin overlap, right click it again and add event, add on component end overlap. Now for the other actor we're going to cast to our character which for me is the third person character but for you it could be third, first, whatever you've named it. I'm going to do that for both the begin and end overlap and the reason we're doing this is so that it will only fire off these events if our character is the one which has overlapped it because that way if an AI overlaps it we don't want it to fire off, we only want it to happen when our character is the one there. So then after this, what I'm going to do is out of the cast third person character on the begin overlap, I'm going to enable input, and off of the end overlap cast, 
we're going to disable the input and this means we can only interact with it we can only kick it down or whatever when we are close enough to it so we're in this box collision which is what I mean by we have to be in here in order to interact with it we go back to the event graph here right click and get player controller and that will be the player controller for both of these however the target will stay itself as we want to enable and disable the input in this blueprint and then what I'm going to do is I want to get an interact action mapping so I'm going to go to edit and project settings once it loads we're going to go down to input on the left here under engine and create an interact now I already have one so I'm going to delete it and don't worry if you don't have any other ones there's from previous tutorials so we're going to hit the plus action mapping here I'm going to name it interact or open door anything like that and I'm going to set this to be the E key and you can set this to whatever you like so it could be E, F, left mouse button, space, anything on those lines but I want it to be interact and E so then I'm going to close that like so now in the event graph again we can right click and search for whatever we just named it so I named mine interact now we have the input action interact there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down G and left click to get a gate with the enter being the pressed of that input action the open being enable input and the close being disable input now what this means is that we have to be inside the box collision and pressing E in order to exit the gate to fire off the code. We don't really need that as we're enabling and disabling the input anyway, however it's always good to have as it helps clean up the code a bit and it's just kind of there as a backup extra security just in case the input might have accidentally stayed enabled, however you might not be in a position so it's just good to do anyway. And out of the exit we're going to get a flip flop. This flip flop here is going to be for opening and closing the code later on the door sorry so if you don't want to be able to open and close the door again after kicking it open you don't need the gate or the flip flop you can get rid of those however if you do want to open and close the door later keep this in and we'll get back to that later again if you don't want to do that you don't need those you can just keep what we have here so now what we're going to do is set up actually kicking open the door so what I'll do is actually move my interact input action up here a little bit and I'll just disconnect that for the moment what I'm going to do is hold down S and left click to get a sequence connecting that into the pressed there then I'm going to hold down O and left click to get a do once and I'm going to get two of those the top one going to then zero the bottom one going into then one for the bottom one I'm going to tick start closed and reset will come out the release of the input action and we won't reset the top one now we're doing this because this means the first time that we want to open the door is going to kick it open which will be this code here and the second time we want to open the door it's just going to normally open and close it which will be down here so the completed of this can go into the enter of the gate so again if you don't want to open and close it again afterwards you don't need the sequence or the second do once here you just need the first do once and that will be a good done for you so again just get rid of that if you don't want to be able to open and close it again afterwards so that's what you'd have now if you don't open and close it but if you do then you'll have this which is perfect so out of the completed of the top do once what we're going to do is cast to our character which again for me is the third person character the object class is going to be get player character and what we want to do after the, out of this is as third person character we want to set actor transform and again this is just going to move our character into the correct position and rotation in front of the door so that the animation looks great and we're doing transform because that includes the location rotation and scale so the new transform what we're going to do is get a reference to our skeletal mesh up there from the top left components list and we're going to simply just get world transform connecting that return value into the new transform there and now it's just going to get that skeletal mesh reference get where it is in the world and set that to be our character's location which is perfect and then as third person character again what we want to do is we want to play anim montage and this is going to play the animation of the kicking down the door which we created earlier so the anim montage is going to simply be our kicking montage there like so out of this we want to add a timeline to actually open and close the door so we're going to be opening the door at the same time pretty much as playing the montage which would be perfect so what we're going to do is out of the anim montage we're going to add a timeline like so and i'm going to name this kick open door or door kick anything on those lines and that can just go into play i'm going to double click that to open it up and i'm going to set the length to be two seconds you can set this to however long you want however i'd recommend using these values as well if you're using the same animation as me at least the first two values anyway but for me i want the full animation length to be two seconds then we're going to add a float track here and name this door kick track or anything along those lines i'm going to right click the graph and add key to curve float with a time of zero and a value of zero then we're going to right click add key 
with a time of 1 and a value also of 0. So the, for the first second of this timeline, nothing is going to happen. Now what you can do is just get a delay here of 1 second and then go into it, however I'm just going to do it in this timeline instead. Now again, this is specific for my animation, as for my animation, there's a whole second before the foot actually reaches the door to kick it open. So if you're using the same animation as me, use this value, however if you're using a different animation, you might want to mess about with it to get it perfect for you. And what I'm going to do is right click and add another key to curve float, the time this time of 1.3 and a value of 1. So 0.3 seconds later, the door is going to be fully opened as we've just really quickly kicked the door open. As we had quite a lot of force, it's just slammed open. I'm going to right click, add another key for the time of 2, so all the way at the end now, and a value of 0.85. Now that isn't necessary either, that's just because I want it to open all the way and then slightly close a little bit as it's kind of like realistic as the players kick the door open and it's kind of just fallen back as you kicked it that hard. However again, completely optional, I just think that's going to look good. And what I'm going to do is right click that final keyframe and change the key interpolation to auto. Right click the keyframe before that and do the same. And that just means that it's going to smoothly close afterwards. So it's going to really sharply open and then smoothly close. Which again, just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Just makes it look that extra bit better. But again, you can customize this to have it look however you like. However, this is our animation for kicking open the door completed. So we can close that timeline like so. And now we need to actually use the timeline to move the door. So this is very simple. What we can do is out of the door kick track here, we can get a LURP and just a normal LURP under float, making sure the track goes into alpha, not A. A, we want to be our closed value for the door, which for me is 0, and B is our open value, which for me is 100. Now I got those by going to the viewport here and selecting the door. So for me, this is the closed position, which you can see on the rotation for the Z is 0. If I put it into my open position, that's going to be 100. Now that's minus 100 there. So actually I want it to open that way, so I'm going to set it to minus 100 instead. But as you can see there, we have minus 100 on the Z, that's how far I want it to open, so that's what I'm going to set B value as, minus 100, like so. So that will go from closed to open. But what we want to do next is get a reference to our door here, so our door static mesh, drag and drop it in, and set relative rotation, as we want to be rotating the door inside the blueprint to be able to open it. That will go into the update, so every single time the timeline updates and goes through this track, we're going to right click the new rotation and split the structure pin. With the return value of the LURP, go into the new rotation of the Z, as again we only want to rotate it on the Z. And that should work perfectly for you. That is going to kick open the door, and again if you only want to do it once, then get rid of this. That means you can't open and close the door later on. However, if you want to be able to open and close the door afterwards, that's very simple. What we can do is get this flip flop here. Out of A, we're going to add a timeline. I'm going to name this door open T for door open timeline and B will go into reverse. As obviously to close the door we just want to reverse how it looks. I'm going to double click this to open it up. I'm going to set the length to be again 2 seconds. Adding another float track naming this open slash close track and this is going to be very similar to what we just did just editing it ever so slightly. We're going to right click add a key to curve float with a time of 0 value of 0 right click, add another key with a time of 1 and a value of 1. I'm setting it to 1 because I'm also going to change the length to be 1 as well as I think 2 seconds is going to be a bit too long. However, we want to go from the very start to the very end. So 0, 0, 1, 1. We can close that and do the same thing we did here. So what I'll do is I will actually just copy and paste this down here. Alpha going to the open and close track, that going into the update, keeping the values the same, and now that will be perfect. So what's going to happen is we're going to kick open the door with our animation for the first time and then if we want to open and close it again afterwards, it's going to open and close it how we want, perfectly like so. So now we can compile, save and we can test this out. So what I'm going to do is minimize this and drag and drop in my door here. So I'm going to move it to be this side, like so, and actually I think I need to rotate the character to be on the other side. However, let's test this out first. I'll place the door in position and actually I do believe it needs to be rotated so what I'm going to do is do that now. So rotate the character to be facing this way. And now the only reason I know that is just from testing it out earlier. So again, test it out to make it look perfect for you. If I hit play, we can go and test this. So we go over to the door, we press E, it's moved us and rotated us into position, and the door then opened perfectly like so. Now I didn't actually see it because I wasn't looking, I was looking at the character. But if we look again, the door is going to open and kind of fall back again like that. So it fires open, pushes open, and falls back. 
what we'll do is just move it out to some empty space so we can get a better look at it. So we try this again, press E, we get the animation and it closes. Open and close it like that. Sorry, then again, yes, we can open and close this. However, one thing, we did this wrong. So we go to the event graph. A doesn't want to go and play. A wants to go into reverse from end. And B wants to go and play from start, like so. So we just got those mixed up ever so slightly. That's just because the door is starting from open. So we can compile and save and play this again. We can kick open the door like that. And then we should be able to open and close it again perfectly like this. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so we have an animation for kicking open a door like so, but the character also gets moved into the correct position and rotation. And then once we've opened it, we can open and close it perfectly again as you normally would like so. But again, I showed you that that can be optional. You can do it either way. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.